7.1 practice problems. An experiment, in an experiment, X and Y were combined in a rigid container at a constant temperature and allowed to react as shown in the equation above. The table provides the data collected during the experiment. Based on the data, which of the following claims is most likely to be correct? So as I look over this table, I can see that at uh, time zero, I had um, lots of the compound X and none of the compound XY, which makes sense since X is my reactant and XY is my product. And then eventually I get a lot more of uh, my product, slightly, uh, slightly more, slightly more, slightly more, and then I level out. And then as well as just the inverse for that concentration of uh, my reactant X. So it looks like my leveling out process happens um, somewhere between 75 and 155 uh, number of minutes here. Um, and I no longer have any change. That means that the forward reaction and the backwards reaction are happening at the same rate. And so that's when we would reach equilibrium. So I would look for something along that line or something, that, uh, something else that is true. So uh, option A says the reaction is was about to reach equilibrium at 15 minutes after the reactants were combined because the concentrations of X and XY were almost the same. So it's not the actual uh, concentration that needs to be equal, it's the rate forward and the rate back that needs to be equal. Uh, therefore holding the concentrations the same uh, time versus time, uh, not in relation to each other. The reaction reached equilibrium between 75 and 155 minutes after the reactants were combined because the concentrations of X and XY remained constant. So uh, this was what I said. So we're going to uh, say that this sounds pretty good, but we'll check to uh, make sure that uh, the rest of them don't make more sense. Uh, option C says the reaction did not reach equilibrium because only 86% of the initial concentration of X was consumed. Uh, equilibrium can be reached um, regardless of how much uh, of the reactant is consumed or how much of the product is made uh, because again equilibrium is when I have the same uh, rate going forward and going back. Uh, the reaction did not reach equilibrium because, the, uh, because initially there was no XY inside the container. Uh, Nope, uh, the XY is the product, so there should not be any product in the initial part of the reaction. That would be rather strange. So option uh, B is my best choice. A sample of uh, dinitrogen tetraoxide is placed in an evacuated container at 373 Kelvin and allowed to undergo a reversible reaction. The concentration of the species um, is measured over time and the data are used uh, to make a graph shown opposite. Which of the following identifies when equilibrium was first reached and provides a correct explanation? So equilibrium we are looking for, sorry about that. Um, we are going to uh, look for when the concentration of my reactant and product are no longer changing and that appears to start taking place at approximately 60 seconds. Um, and then uh, from then on, I, I am holding steady at the same concentration of my reactant and product. So option A says at 14 seconds uh, is when we reach equilibrium because uh, the uh, reactant is twice that of the product which implies that the forward and reverse reaction rates are equal. Uh, no, we are again looking for our uh, slope of concentration, our overall concentration to be uh, flat. We don't want our concentration to change at that 14 second interval. We still have um, a non-zero slope, so nobody do that. At 23 seconds, because the product equals that of the reactant, which shows an equal concentrations, and that therefore we are at equilibrium. That is not what equi equilibrium means. Equilibrium is not about the individual concentration of reactant and product, but instead the uh, uh, concentration no longer shifting between the two. So since we see um, a slope for both of those um, that is non-zero, that is not going to be true. 
at 40 seconds because the product is twice that of the reactant, which matches the stoichiometry of the balanced chemical equation. I don't care about the balanced chemical equation. All I care about is the overall concentration um, and whether it is changing uh, at a particular time. And then finally, option choice D um, at 60 seconds because the product and reactant remain constant, indicating that the uh, Fordham reverse reaction rates are equal. This is correct. That is the definition of a uh, uh, reaction at equilibrium. Is that my Ford in reverse uh, is the same, and therefore my concentrations do not change. Which of the following statements is true for the equilibrium vapor pressure of a liquid in a closed system? So uh, the equilibrium vapor pressure in a, uh, of a liquid in a closed system, option A says it remains constant when the temperature increases. So if I increase the temperature, then I am going to increase the overall energy of the, uh, gas, uh, the liquid molecules, therefore increasing the uh, amount of molecules that have the overall energy required to escape and go from gas to, or sorry, from liquid to gas, so no. It decreases to half of its original value if the volume of the gas phase is doubled. Um, so the vapor pressure is, um, is not affected by, uh, by that. Uh, increases to twice its original value if the volume of the liquid phase is doubled. Again, uh, the vapor pressure is going to be based off of uh, the amount of molecules that have the overall energy required to escape the intermolecular forces in the liquid. So, no. Um, it decreases to half its original value if the surface area of the liquid is reduced by one half. No. Um, again, we are dealing with the number of molecules that have the uh, amount of energy required to escape the liquid phase. That does not change uh, based off of surface area. And then it is independent of the volume of the vapor phase. This is going to be um, my correct choice as uh, vapor pressure is independent of the volume. A cylinder with a movable piston is filled with a small amount, 100 millimoles, of liquid water at a pressure of one atmosphere and a temperature of 80 degrees Celsius. All of the air in the cylinder is excluded. The cylinder is placed in a water bath held at 80 degrees Celsius. Uh, the piston is slowly moved out to expand the volume of the cylinder to 20 liters as the pressure inside the cylinder is monitored. Um, a plot of the pressure versus the volume of the system is shown in the figure opposite. Which of the following statements most clo closely indicates with justification the region of the curve where the equilibrium where the equilibrium represented below occurs. So where I am uh, equally likely to go between uh, liquid and gas. And uh, this is going to be when uh, pressure is held constant. That means that we don't have any more gas uh, being uh, uh, let loose, basically, and uh, filling the walls, having a higher pressure. Um, and so that would be uh, section B is where um, my uh, pressure is held constant and therefore um, uh, we, are, we are holding steady uh, at the likelihood of uh, the forward and reverse reaction here. So that is going to leave me with option choice B, which states region B because the pressure inside the cylinder is equal to the vapor pressure of the water at when both liquid and gas phases are present. The figure opposite shows two closed containers. Each container uh, contains the same volume of acetone at equal, um, in equilibrium with its vapor at the same temperature. The vapor pressure of acetone is, okay, so um, we are looking here, we have the uh, same volume of acetone. We're just dealing with a different uh, surface uh, surface area. 
that is uh, visible. However, um, if my temperature is held the same uh, and these are two closed containers here, uh, we are going to uh, have the same amount of energy available to both containers uh, with the same temperature and therefore my vapor pressure should be the same. Uh, option A says higher in container one because the surface area of the liquid is greater. Since these containers are closed, we're not interacting with any um, extra gases that could potentially come in and make contact uh, and impart some energy. Uh, no. Option choice B says higher in container one because the volume of the vapor is greater. Just because the uh, volume of the uh, empty the amount of empty space is greater doesn't mean that the vapor pressure is going to increase. Lower in container one because the level of the liquid is lower. We know that this is the same amount here and also that the amount does not change the vapor pressure. Same in both containers because the volume of the liquid is the same. Volume does not uh, change the vapor pressure of the acetone. However, option choice E says same in both containers because the temperature is the same. My temperature is going to be the thing that is going to affect my vapor pressure, and so that is going to be uh, the answer choice that is selected. Um, hydrogen gas and nitrogen gas were placed in a rigid vessel and allowed to reach equilibrium in the presence of a catalyst according to the following equation. The diagram opposite shows how the concentrations of hydrogen, nitrogen, and ammonia in the system changed over time. Which of the following is true for the system between time one and time two? So between time one and time two, uh, we have a slope of zero. It looks like all of the concentrations remain consistent um, for all three of our molecules here. So that looks like that is going to be when we are at equilibrium. Uh, option choice A says the concentration of nitrogen decreased. We're holding steady, so no. The temperature of the system decreased. Uh, we have no indication of that at all. Um, option C says the number of effective collisions between nitrogen and uh, hydrogen was zero. That would mean that my Ford reaction basically stopped full stop, so no, because we can see that um, we are able to go forward and backwards at the same rate, therefore keeping our uh, concentrations the same. The rates of the forward and reverse reactions are equal. Uh, this is going to be true. We are keeping consistent the overall concentration of all three of our molecules here, which means that since, again, this is a reversible reaction, we have the same amount uh, going forward into the product as going backwards into the reactants. So D sounds good so far. And then E says the rate of formation of the ammonia molecules was equal to the rate of disappearance of the uh, hydrogen molecules. Now this is, uh, it sounds tempting, but it's not true um, just because the overall uh, rate of uh, forward and backwards is the same does not mean that the overall ratios are the same and we do have uh, different coefficients here. So option choice D is going to be my best choice. Uh, phosphorus uh, pentachloride decomposes into phosphorus trichloride and chlorine according to the equation shown. A pure sam uh, sample of phosphorus pentachloride is placed in a rigid evacuated one liter container. The initial pressure of the phosphorus pentachloride is one atmosphere. The temperature is held constant until the phosphorus pentachloride reaches equilibrium with the decomposition products. The figures above show the initial and equilibrium conditions of the system. As the reaction progresses towards equilibrium, the rate of the Ford reaction, so as we go uh, closer and closer to equilibrium, my rate of the Ford reaction should uh, uh, become consistent with the rate of uh, the backwards reaction where we are holding steady, where we have a slope of zero. So um, option choice A says increases until it becomes the same as the reverse reaction at equilibrium. So 
Um, the forward reaction should be the favored reaction, and we should be uh, decreasing our overall uh, rate until it becomes close to zero, not increasing it. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, stays constant before and after equilibrium is reached. No, uh, that would make that not at equilibrium. Uh, decreases to become constant near zero rate at equilibrium. So uh, yes, we should be holding steady so that our forward reaction is um, has a slope of near zero. Uh, so that sounds good so far. Option choice D says decreases to become zero at equilibrium of hydrogen molecules. Um, no, we, we should be at a rate that is uh, very, very close to zero, as close as possible, um, but we don't even have hydrogen in this reaction at all, and so it would be very strange for it to become zero um, equilibrium of a molecule that's not even involved in the reaction.